Hello everyone, this is Genius Yoshi and today we are building Milotach, the King of Atlantis. It's a 4-4, quest for 3, and whenever he's banished, boom! You flood the board by, well, flood, you like a tidal wave that bounces every card your opponent has back into their hand and you keep your board. Alright, so that's pretty cool. Uh, it's expensive though, so we might want to shift onto the big guy. And his shift 4 can actually come in pretty quickly. Okay, so what kind of shifting target do we have? Well, we have the 1-drop Milo, who's just a vanilla 2-2. Not great, but again, shift 4 to bring out the tidal wave, bounce back your opponent's board. Uh, seems pretty good. And there's one more Milo that I don't really like, but there's a better shifting target. There is everyone's favorite space goo, Morph. Not Morph Slash. Morph Space Goo. So we can use both of these and suddenly we have four shifting targets for Milo, which is pretty great. Okay, so now we have Milo in play. The opponent has a moderate board and they decide to just wait and then one shot us with questing or wait for us to get into a bad board position and then use the mass bounce effect to heal some of their characters or re-trigger enter the battlefield abilities. Once you have your Milo in play, your opponent can play around it. Unless, unless you have a way to sacrifice your Milo. Because his ability says whenever he's banished, you can banish it yourself. Not necessarily just through combat, although that's a great way, but there is one card. Dinner Bell, which allows you to sacrifice one of your characters. So draw cards equal to damage on chosen characters, then banish them. So we can banish our own Milo and potentially get some card draw out of the dinner bell and force on our turn whenever we want the opponent's full board gets bounced back. Now the combo seems pretty competent but we have a 7 drop uninkable and a 4 drop uninkable. Slight issue there especially since multiple dinner bells are just atrocious to get. Uh, we don't want more than one but if we're not playing three or four of those, it's going to be hard to land our combo. So what can we do to mitigate that? Well, honestly, we don't have that many options. But one of the options is to play Strike a Good Match, which is draw two, then discard a card. Any of these draw discard effect is going to allow us to discard a useless uh, extra dinner bell and exchange it for another card, which is almost as good as drawing a card at that point. So we're going to be playing a full play set of that. So it's inkable, it's a song. There's very low cost to playing a full set of Strike a Good Match. Okay. So now we have our Milo, and there's not that much more that combos with Milo. So let's look at Dinner Bell. Well, Dinner Bell is great when you have a damaged character. And sometimes it can be hard to put damage on characters. But there is Miss... Muttergottle, Wicked and Withered, who enters the battlefield with three damage in play. So if we have our dinner bell, we play Muttergottle, eat her, and suddenly we draw three cards. That's not bad. Four ink, one card to draw three card. It's pretty good ability. Also, Muttergottle is just a 3 1, unless if you don't have that, she's inkable. So there's no real harm in playing a full play set. All right, so where do we go next from this? Well, we're looking for high willpower characters so that we can make use of that dinner bell. Because dinner bell allows us to draw cards equal to damage, and the more damage, the more cards. But to get more damage, we need more willpower. We need more health so that we can take the damage. And there it gets a little tricky. If we look for high willpower cards, Notice that there's not that many good options. Let's start with the two drops. So in terms of two drops, one of my favorite options here is to go after Ursula the Deceiver. 
already such a good card and that critical three points of toughness or willpower or health to help take a bit of damage she she can run into a two drop and then you eat her with the dinner bell you've drawn two cards you've picked one card out of the opponent's hand and gotten mm, oh so delicious value out of ursula if we look in the three drops well we do have the ursula deceiver of all that's fantastic but the songs in ruby don't really go so well with ursula so we're gonna skip that for now then we have Shere Khan, just a 3-3, not really a combat style card. Could go with Mickey Mouse. As a 3-4, we could go with Mini, but then again, Invasive isn't necessarily what we want. Yago has the 4 health, or Jasper also has it, but nothing overly appealing. So at this point, let's skip the 3 drops for now and go after the 4. <clears throat> and in the 4... We'll notice we have the same problem. We have high quester, high damage, uh, a high damager style like Mulan. Uh, nice ability, but just 3-3, three, 2-3, three, uh, three. evasive with 3. It's hard to get bigger numbers. 5-3. Can we get off of that 3 willpower into like a 4, even a 5? And the best option I could find is Cubby, the mighty lost boy. Yes. A vanilla character with just 3-5 because of that 5 willpower. I want to use her as a beater. I want to use him to soak up some damage, take out the threat, then eat it with the dinner bell, and draw a bunch of cards. So we're going to be playing a full play set of Cubby. Let's see how it works out. Then if we move to the 5 drops, we have Mr. Maui, who is fantastic to go with dinner bell. Already a great removal spell. And what's better than a great removal spell is after he's taking out the threat, sack him, draw four cards. That's value. So Maui, instant include. And then if I'm looking for other high health characters, there's one of my old time favorites that is there. With the name of Mulan. Another five willpower character. Four or five with a nice ability. Why not? In the six drops, well, now we want a bit more. Uh, I'm a little worried about aggressive decks. <clears throat> John Silver, I really like, also forces the opponent to challenge. And sometimes we can force the opponent to challenge into our King of Atlantis and force him to just bounce everything back. And, and, and force the opponent to challenge, take out our Milo, and bounce everything they own into their hand. Seems pretty good, right? Let's play a pair of Madame Medusas because we, we can afford a couple more uninkable slots. And she's just pretty good. She hits a lot of nice threats, especially Beast Tragic Hero who has the three, uh, the three power. It's one of the main targets for Madame Medusa and she really hits a lot of things. There we have it, 46 cards. Okay, where do we go from here? So we have our 10 uninkables, which is good. We can probably afford a little bit more as long as they're cheap. Don't want to afford more high-end uninkables. Inkables are still nicer. And we do have a hole in the three drops. So we have one, bunch of twos. Then we go to four. Five and above are okay. We're also playing a space queue, right? We're, we're playing a morph. So let's look at shifting targets for morph. And if we look at everything with shift, <coughs> we will be, well, disappointed. Mickey Mouse Artful Rogue is interesting. But we're not playing a bunch of actions, so we can't really make use of his ability. I mean, we could play with the 3-drop Mickey and use him as a big beater. It's okay. Um, we could use Aladdin. But I've used Aladdin quite a bit before, and he feels a little lackluster these days. Uh, the Shameless Firebrand Scar, I don't really want it. Another big uninkable. Bells, another uninkable. Lady Tremaine is an interesting one. And a nice shifting target. 
But really, where my attention focuses is either Queen of Hearts, which gives us more card draw, which is quite interesting, and we're already playing big combats and it's a small shift cost, or Cheshire Cat from the Shadows. And I'm going to opt with a Cheshire Cat this game, but I think Queen of Hearts is another interesting approach to take. So I'll take the Cheshire Cat, which means that we'll want the extra shifting target that also fits in our tree drop slot. Of the Cheshire Cat, not all there. All right, where does that bring us? It brings us to 54 cards. I like another three drop. And we do have this nice kit cloud kicker that's been doing quite a bit of work in the metagame, uh, just slowing down these aggressive decks. Uh, the, the ability to bounce back a two drop Pinocchio or uh, a Maleficent is actually pretty decent. Or sometimes you can catch the opponent off guard. It's a nice inkable sort of removal type of character or slow down. And slowing down is quite important for a deck. And now we, we're missing two cards. I don't know what to do and to put. So I'm going to put Improvise because Improvise can, can get cycled. You just play it for one, draw a card. You can also give plus one power, which can be useful in certain situations, but I'm really playing it as a cantrip. I'm happy with my deck. Uh, I just want to reduce the number of cards I'm playing. It's another inkable option. And there we have it. Dinner bell and dinner is served with the king of Atlantis, Milotach. And I hope you'll enjoy the deck in action with some games coming right up. We're playing against Amethyst Steel using our Milo Thatch deck. We have a Bell, we have a Milo, but we don't have a shifting target. We do have a decent curve with Ursula into Cat into Cubby. So I think we send, send non-inkables away. As weird as that sounds. Or maybe, maybe you just send Milo away and we keep oh, the other way. Send Milo away and keep the dinner bell. Making sure that we have enough inkables to keep the flow going. I know, I know. I'm advertising a Milo Touch deck and send it send it back. But it's also a bell deck. The dinner bell. And I want to see what Cubby can do with a dinner bell. Double Mulan's too much. Let's see what kind of songs our opponent has. None. It's a Flaversham item deck. Rise of the Titans, just an action. Best chosen item or location useless in this matchup. I also have to worry about the double Cinderella whammy. Well, we didn't get a card out of it. Still got a lot of interesting information. Opponent has a ton of inkables and some big stuff. And Ursula doesn't match up very well stats wise against Captain Hook. Opponent discards Cogsworth. That's nice. It's a card we didn't know that our opponent had. Gonna stop improvising and play the good old Cheshire Cat. Trying to apply some pressure. But that Captain Hook's just doing so much by sitting there. It's a very easy trade against the Cheshire Cat. It prevents Ursula from questing effectively. And we know our opponent wants to Flaversham next turn. As we find a one drop Milo. Let's send Milo away. 
think we're just going to resolve our cubby. Go for double quest. If the opponent wants to take out Ursula, then Captain Hook is going to be on the hook for a counterattack. And if it goes after Cheshire Cat, well, we've gotten a free quest from Ursula. I'm fine either way. I guess I should show off some cubby. 3 5, quest for 1. Just big stats. Kind of a vanilla character. But we're looking for big stats if we're planning on landing a dinner bell. And then we can say to our opponent, dinner is served. Flavorsham drawing a plethora of cards for our opponent. And now Hook has to make the big decision. You can also just shift the big Cheshire Cat and banish Captain Hook if he goes after Ursula. He goes after our cat. And it's a trade. find ourselves a Milo. Milo's a nice pickup. We're going to land our Mulan for now. On five, the opponent has the option of shifting into the threatening Cinderella. So I'll simply pass the turn here. One somewhat threatening with a larger board of characters. At least we get to make our opponent think twice about putting something, exerting something that we can challenge and take out with Mulan. Think twice, draw and draw again. Opponent is outcarding us significantly. So I'm hoping to make good use of our dinner bell. That could be hard if the opponent goes after a big Cinderella. The grab your sword here works very well in our favor. We now have Ursula, which we can sacrifice for draw two cards. As long as we draw an inkable. Looks like the opponent has something else up their sleeve. Potentially a song. Opponent is running out of time. Fortunately, we draw another Milo. Which means that we'll have to resolve the dinner bell in the void and pass the turn back. And now we're likely to get Tinker Belled. Which really isn't as nice. An inkable would have been much, much better here. Also, we'd be much closer to casting our Milo Touch. I'm expecting Ink Tinkerbell takes out our Ursula. And we can eat Cubby. Draw three cards. Our opponent goes Cogsworth. Playing the defensive game. It's an interesting choice. Can't quest with Cinderella. We're going to take it out. Move on if you do that. Then along came Zeus. To mess up our plan of taking out Cinderella. We're still going to take her out if you quest with Ch with. Cubby. So opponent doesn't do that. Strike a good match. A nice sinkable. For now, my interest lies in eating some squid. Dinner is served, and it's named Ursula. Gonna ink, strike a good match, and land another cubby.
I don't really have an interest in challenging that Flaversham. Mostly because I'm really afraid of that big Cinderella. Maybe I'm playing around it too much. Now we have a good option to match our opponent's board using our dinner bell. Fires the opponent fires the cannon at Cubby, inks a card, and Tinkerbell, I imagine. You can't just be setting us up for cards, right? Ooh, Tiana. That deserves a highlight. Tiana's dangerous. Although I don't think we play that many uh, that many spells in this deck. Where is Miss Tiana? There she is. Resist to you while she's exerted and you have no cards in hand. Opponent can play action. All right. Well, first things first. Actually, I'm not sure what's the first thing. Kind of want to eat the cubby for four cards. That seems extremely tempting. But then we don't have enough ink to land John Silver. Although Tiana has resist three. Or inking and dropping a mule attach, which would then allow us to bounce our full opponent's board back into their hand. That's too good. That's too good. That's the gameplay of the deck. See? I sent one Milotach back early on and see how I end up. Three Milotach. Alright, there it is. Milo on the battlefield. You better think twice, opponent, because when Milo goes down, everything bounces right back to where they started in your hand. Although I guess half of these cards started in your deck. So my analogy is incorrect. But that's okay. We've got the King of Atlantis. One of four. Opponent shifts Cinderella. No whole new world, please. <clears throat> Opponent sees our big bounce plan. <clears throat> and everything has resist one. Well, you can still take out Flavorsham. I see no reason to bounce it back to our opponent's hand. Then you can eat Milo, draw a card. Yeah, that sounds good. I'd like to draw a bit more off of Milo, but you can't have everything. Oh wait, that's not enough damage. Too much resistance. All right, well, probably should should still do that. I guess I have to eat the Milo. Draw a card. Milo is banished, and so we bounce everything. And then we get to. Ink a good match. Mine could be number three. And that'll be our turn. So the opponent is now stuck with a ton of cards in hand. Milo Bell at its finest. Highlighting Cubby. Now we have a nice play of eating this cubby, drawing four cards, dropping a Milo, because we'll have enough ink for all that. Setting ourselves up for a rinse and repeat. Hades comes in. <laughs> now it's the odd, the odd part. Do you force us to ink the undamaged cubby or the damaged cubby? And honestly, I think that the four damaged cubby would have been the right play. Because right now, that gives us four cards. Actually, never mind that. That gives us four Mother Gottles. Minus one Mother Gottle, plus one Maui. 
I don't land a big meal up. I can ink Madrigato for now. Quest, play a small Milo. I mean, we, we can't possibly shift the third Milo thanks to our opponent. Say that's not true. Now, because of Sapphire's wording, we can send our cards into the ink, put it into the opponent, into the player's ink well, which means it doesn't get banished, which means we don't get to trigger Milo if our opponent has another Hades effect or a let it go. So you do have to be careful about that. Opponents pondering their option. Ops with the no option option. Now we can go Gottel, eat Gottel. Draw three, which is quite tempting. Gets us the six ink. We can sh still shift a, a Milo. Then we have double Milo for double success. We can quest. That's three, six, seven with the cubby. Brings us to 14 with the threat of Milo bouncing everything, which is quite appealing. And we still have a mid full of cards after that. So let's go for that option. Mother Gottel. Let's get you back in here. We can ink a Maui. Then you go four plus three. Shift. Play Cheshire Cat. Why not? Double Milo Cubby. We'll set up a Cheshire Cat surprise shifting to exile Cinderella. If for some reason the opponent manages to get rid of her Milo and take a hit on Cinderella, like if Cinderella challenges Cubby. I must say I'm quite pleased with how this game is going. We're seeing the power of Milo. Opponent grabs their sword once, as long as there's not a second one. Second one hurts. But blow up our field, but then yeah, the opponent should have been singing it if that was the case. Cinderella can challenge a ready character, but I mean, you don't want to challenge Cheshire Cat. Tinkerbell doesn't do quite enough here. It's really a second grab your sword that's backbreaking. Even then, bounces back all our opponent's board. We've been in okay position. And the opponent really should have sung, sung them both. So Hades goes in for a point of damage. Or for a kill on the cubby. And cubby bites the dust. Cinderella hits a Milo and Milo triggers. Take back your cards, opponent. Opponent lands Cogsworth. Now we know what's coming next turn. It's going to be Cinderella. And it, I need to think more before I say stuff. It's going to be Hades to banish our Milo. Because once Milo is banished, well, then uh, we're in a bit of trouble. And he, he would just go to the ink pool and not be banished. So it would not trigger. But for now, we can go to 19. Yeah, Cheshire Cat doesn't quest for 3. So we go to 19. Then we just want to make our opponent's life difficult. 
So we land a big Cheshire cat and can we land something else? Or do we go... Mulan's harder to remove. Let's go Mulan with some card options. Let's eat another Mother Gothel. And lend ourselves another chest shark. Yeah. Let's try to make it as hard as possible for our opponent to come out of this. Opponent needs a Hades. But now the Hades needs to target the Mulan. Opponent needs to grab your sword. And too many cards. And the opponent doesn't have them. So Milo Dinner Bell takes the win. Pulling off the combo and bouncing back from a seemingly unwinnable board. Playing against Steel Amber with our dinner bell. Let's see if we can feast on our opponent's weaknesses and let the King of Atlantis make the rules. So we have a Milo, a Mother Gothel, dinner bell. Dinner bell, Mother Gothel is pretty fun. Yeah, that seems good. Going second. I'm not sure we'll want to play the, the Milo. But I'm happy enough to go one drop Mother Gothel, maybe Ursula Dinner Bell, something like that. Oh, yes, sorry. Dinner Bell on the far end there. Forgot to zoom back out. Opponent to play. See what they decide to do. What's Amber Steel typically? There's access to the double bodyguards. Mr. Smee removal. Oh yeah, Amber Steel song, of course. When you forget about your favorite deck, things aren't quite right. Only solution? Play more Lorcana. Do we want drop turn one Milo I I don't think so I think we'll we'll just keep it for ink ability especially since we don't have the big Milo in hand opponent is stitching together a strategy right now so we find another Ursula which we don't really need let's see what our opponent's got Find a whole new world. It's a good hit. So a pair of stitches and aerial. This Ursula is just fantastic in that matchup. Opponent's almost always gonna have a song in hand. So maybe you should have gone Mother Gothel and then after the opponent aerials have a slightly better odd of having a better pick as piglet comes in slightly regretting not having played that Milo then we're hitting another one I'm going to land the Milo now they want to hit one of the stitches I think so Put a bit of damage on Ursula for a potential dinner bell. Although the opponent has the option now of challenging it with the other stitch, which in retrospect was a bad move on my part. Especially with Mulan. Big stitch comes in. Okay, opponent's just gonna quest. We know our opponent's last card is Ariel, so that big stitch isn't a huge worry just yet. I don't want to Maui it into oblivion next turn. Let's stake out 
some some of her opponent's power on board. We know that that's an aerial. And I want to keep the Mulan. So let's ink our Mulan. Drop a dinner bell. Pass the turn back. Unfortunately, we need to pay some ink to activate Dinner Bell's ability, so we're not going to get access to these yummy cards quite yet. Opponent inks the aerial. Alright, then there's a big queen hitting the battlefield. Opponent will pay dearly once they go to quest with Stitch, because we've got the goods, we've got the Maui. Maui the Punisher. Take out Stitch. And now the Queen is in a bad spot. Actually, the Queen can't. The Queen would have to trade if she challenged Mother Gothel, so we'll take the free quest here. I do really want the three cards off of Mother Gothel, but. Oh! Oh! Top deck Benja. I mean, out of all the top decks, Venja, Whole New World, about the worst thing the opponent could have drawn. Alright, well, I want to play it that way. Problem with the Queen is whenever she quests, so we're going to force you to go on a challenge. Unfortunately, we can't exert Mr. Maui. So, either you sacrifice your Benja into my Mother Gothel, or you sacrifice the Queen into, into Mother Gothel. As a second Benja enters the battlefield. <coughs> but Maui with John Silver on the battlefield is a deadly combination. Still can't believe that the opponent Benjad Arbel just entered and went Belja. Yeah, I know it's borderline funny where the line is very far and I'm very loose with where I set my borders and what's a funny dad joke and a not funny dad joke. Opponent decides to trade the Benja. Which means the quest will have to stay at the ready. And we find a morph. Don't really like the morph here. Ooh, yes, yes. We can sing with Maui. Should have done that last turn. Strike a good match. Not the best. I'll discard our morph. I'll drop more threats. And we'll force the queen into another combat. This time, Benja's not going to save you. Whole new world. I need to stop telling my opponent what I hope that they don't top deck. So that's another way of saving the queen. She can't quest, but she can sing. And that song just nullifies our advantage, mostly. Still have Maui available for some good combats. <sighs> Strength for Raging Fire, goodbye. Should have targeted John with that. One is just a head too much on lore. Have access to the card advantage thanks to another bell. Improvise is cute, but it's not going to help us. So, Mother Gato, time for you to make the trade. Take out that queen. Now I need stuff. doesn't really matter which stuff it just needs to be big stuff and a lot of stuff 
So for a seven, we can go Gothel and Mulan. It's probably our best bet. So we'll ink and improvise. We'll go with the double spell. Well, Cheshire Cat's not really the king of combat. And we'll force Piglet. Piglet can't quest. So your opponent can quest for at most four. Oh, I tend to forget Venja's a double quester. Maybe I should have hit Benja. Queen comes in. Hopefully not another whole new world or a strength of raging fire. Those raging fires, they're they're devastating. Go wide, draw tons of cards. Play big removal spells. Win games. <sighs> yeah. A whole new world of trouble. That's what it is. What we need is a Milo to sacrifice. I don't think we have the means of stopping our opponent. Manda Medusa is helpful. So 16, we need to prevent our opponent from questing for four. <clears throat> All right, so Mulan takes out Piglet. I think this one's the almost given start. Mulan triggers, so now we have questing for quite a bit. The opponent has a big queen. We could run into some trouble. We'll probably send Mother Gothel at Benja. Or we can play Madame Medusa, take out Benja, and then we take out Mr. Smee, I guess. But if we do that, we quest for three. We can quest for five and have Medusa in play. can also go kit and bounce the Benjo, which then allows us to go morph Ursula or morph Cheshire Cat. Yeah, I think that's better. Let's bounce away that Benja. Opponent can now quest for three, but the queen is lethal. So do I want to sacrifice Mother Gothel? Can I afford to sacrifice Mother Gothel? There's also the option of shifting a Milo next turn. But then, oh, and we can give plus one Mr. Smee. Yeah, let's go for that. Let's take out a queen. Let's ink, strike a good match. Land a morph, land a cat and go to quest for three off of Mulan. <clears throat> oh, actually, Smee, Smee quest for two. Ooh, big mistake, Genius Yoshi. Big mistake. I needed the kit, the Smee. And hit the Benja. Well, let's see, maybe the opponent doesn't have the queen. One has a grab your sword, which wipes out our board and our morph and our chances of success. Well, that's not good. Not good at all. So apparently maybe I needed Ursula to pick that out. Sleepy's flute's also gonna do it. Good game opponent. Gave you a fight, but few too many songs of dooms and yeah. It was close. We're playing against Steel Amethyst. With Milo ringing a bell. 
All right, we have Morph, Cat, Double Improvise, and a big Milo. Morph into Milo is interesting. Two Improvises, it's a little too much, but we'll keep one. And we find a Kit. Kit's a good pickup with that hand. Gives us a bit more survivability. Start by inking Mulan and passing the turn. Yeah. There's a goat, and where there's a goat, there's probably Meta Mims. And they're Maleficent. Hits the board. Don't think we'll need a Cheshire Cat this game. So let's open up with Morph. Thinking maybe we can kit back the Maleficent next turn. We want to reach five. Oh, it's four, so we can shift. Milo. Oh, even better. We get to bounce back and Madame Mim. Actually, let me double check Kit. I should really know his Kit by now. It's two power or less. Okay, so we can't, we can't Kit the Madame Mim. So we're gonna ink one. That puts us in the slightly awkward spot where I'd like to play a Kit anyways. That's very inefficient to do so. Well, let's just strike a good match, hard cast it, throw away one of our Milos. Let's cycle. Cycle our improvise, pick up a Cheshire Cat, and that'll be our turn. As the card says, we've improvised during the turn. It's a fairly decent card. Just draw a card. Then giving plus one power can can be useful in some cases. Pinocchio, Maleficent. <coughs> all right, all right. We can probably throw our, Urs our Ursula. I don't think our opponent plays that many songs. And now, I think it's time to shift Milo. When do we quest? It's a three quester. We can take out a Metamin Snake. If we quest and the opponent goes Fox, the opponent can quest with everything, trade with our Milo and end up with an empty board then what's our follow-up play? We'll be on six so we can open up with a John Silver on an empty board that actually sounds pretty good alright let's go for that shift our Milo and apply some pressure It's one of these, um, I want to say Atis. It's one of these emerald cards that quests for a lot and says, ha ha ha, you gotta challenge me, otherwise I'm going to be a, a big threat, but you don't want to challenge me because if you do, there's a big negative effect that's coming for your face. In this case, it's all your cards get bounced back. Then again, our opponent's questing for a ton. I also like the synergy with John Silver here. We can force the opponent to challenge into Milo. And there's the Madame Mim Fox play that we discussed a little earlier. <clears throat> but that's okay. Milo gives us the tempo that we need. And if your opponent doesn't swing into the Milo, well, we'll take out Pinocchio. All right, Milo trigger. Everything goes back. Phone against the land of Maleficent. What's some leftover ink? Oh, I miscounted. All right, well we'll go for Plan B. 
which is Kitmore. You get bounced back, Miss Maleficent. And I'll land a nice little Mighty Morphin Space Goo. Kit protecting our life total. I mean, preventing our opponent's lore. Who double Pinocchio. And Maleficent, opponent threatening to quest for 8 next turn. That's a pretty big threat. Do I want the kit or do I want the big cat? I think I want the kit, even with the morph on, on the battlefield. So John's gonna force Pinocchio into a challenge. I want him to challenge my kit. Let's see if the opponent's playing something other than threats. Well, there's a bunch of bounce characters. The Mad Mims. I guess bouncing Pinocchio would work. Opponent doesn't have the bounce spell. Thanks to John Silver's ability, Kit makes a casualty. Also, whenever John quests, we get to force a challenge. Another Maleficent comes in. So we get to trade two power or less. We can bounce back the, the rabbit. We probably don't want that. Can take out Maleficent, force the other Maleficent into a bad challenge. While gaining some lore off of John. Let's go for Mulan. Apply a bit of threatening pressure to the board. There's another Merlin bunny coming in. It's the Madame Mims we don't want to see because the opponent can protect the Maleficence and get themselves in position for a good challenge. Don't want no good challenges from the opponent. As the bunny quests, an opponent is forced into a very, very bad exchange. And we find dinner bell. That's quite nice. Alright, well, Mulan will do her thing. And take out Merlin Bunny. Which gives plus one to the lore of John Silver. Get a quest with John, forcing Maleficent to combat, and we get a land of dinner bell. Do we want, do we want to ink our kit? No, I think we need the bounce. I think we're gonna need it. I am afraid of Madame M. Fox, which would ruin my day if I going to challenge John Silver. There she is. Dinner bell. Let's review what's for dinner. Opponent goes after Mulan. I didn't see that one coming. Allows us to draw cards equals to damage on one of our characters. And then we have to sacrifice it, of course. Opponent going for a bunch of Maleficence. We can kit one away, force the other one to challenge John. Which means the opponent quests for two, does a bad challenge. Then we still have a John trigger for next turn, as well as a kit challenge. Let's force the Maleficent. Let's bounce back a Maleficent. Unfortunately, we're stuck with the Mulan and not much to do with her. The opponent just has too many cards off of the bunnies. Bunnies are replicating everywhere. And it's too fast. 
Maybe our opponent just has uninkable seven drops in their hand. Or more bunnies. Ah, uh, it's an infestation of bunnies. More Maleficence. Not sure what we can draw. Cheshire Cat's not going to do it. I don't think we have a winning move here. Let's force Maleficent into a challenge. Activate our dinner bell. Okay. We find a Maui. Maui is something we can play. It's not enough, but Maui takes out Merlin. And the opponent can still quest for two because little Mr. Pascal has evasive over here. And Kit on a surfboard, air surfboard, just doesn't have the moves to hit the chameleon. We got a use of dinner bell. We got a 14. We made we made the game quite reasonable for the level of aggression the opponent put up. And we had a pretty good game. We got close. John Silver MVP for sure with all of these forced challenges and seeing these Maleficents go ah to the face of the alien pirate was delightful. We are playing against Sapphire Steel. And we have Maui Mulan, Kitch Cat, Improvised Milomorph. Bit too much small stuff. Send away our Milo. Send away our Mulan. We'll keep the rest. Second morph, second kit. Alright, well, kit goes to the ink. Mostly telegraphing that we have another one in hand. Opponent inks a bell. Popsicle. So it's a Flaversham, potentially controlish style deck. Land Morph, which is not great in this matchup. Opponent has too many pings, for, ping for one with steel. Let it go to the ink, and the hook comes in. All right, well, actually I don't really want that extra kit. I think I just want to quest with Morph, land a cat. Go for the pressure play. Keep kit for uh, Flaversham next turn. Actually, opponent can't reach Flaversham. I'm playing first. I'm on three ink. Opponent's just on two. Ooh, Coxworth. Iron Defense. Fishborn Quill. Okay. Maybe the opponent can't play. Well, no. It's still the next turn from the next turn from when I said it earlier. Opponent can Flaversham now. Can Flaversham next turn. Oh well. More cards to the ink. Thanks to the Fishborn Quill. Fishbone Quill. I don't have much to play this turn. Pretty much have to morph. Quest quest might as well play the kit and let's cycle draw a card just trying to have a bit more characters on the battlefield
There comes a grab your sword. Yeah, not looking too great. Hmm. Opponent inks another card. Well, at least we, we kept our Cheshire Cat. We can shift. Shift E damage Cheshire Cat. How useful is that? 5 6 evasive. Opponent playing some let it goes. Oh, that give us some, a lot of ink. No, he doesn't seem great in this position. Let's shift. More health to the Cheshire Cat. How often do we get to play this guy? It's pretty rare. From the shadows. Like a Starcraft stalker. Spawn more overlords. Wait. Wrong game. Opponent has a guest. No. Find some extra cards. And more to the fishbone quill. Sensing a whole new world coming soon. Find dinner bell. Not exactly what we want. I'll play John. Deny that guest on some questing for next turn, and the cat is evasive. So there's no problem there. Can't touch this. Invisible cat. Opponent keeps on eating the flavor shams with a nice, tasty popsicle on the battlefield. Ooh, lucky dime. Some fun stuff. Lucky Dime gains you lore amount equal to the amount of lore on one of your characters. So that'd be three for guests now. But the opponent still needs two to activate. Not this turn, my friend. Not this turn. Whole new world. There it is. get a fresh meter cards actually I don't have anything to remove the lucky dime so that's gonna be moderately painful to have to deal with have to be careful about grab your swords For seven, Mulan, Ursula seems quite appealing. I don't think we're gonna need Mr. Cubby here. Let's see what our opponent's got. Thought sees you. And then along came Zeus. So we find a removal. Tinkerbell, Gaston, Benja, Mickey, Cogsworth. All right. So only removal really is Tinkerbell in that hand. So we can afford to land our Mulan. Quest with the cat. Yeah, might as well quest with John. Force you to combat. Nice to see the power of Ursula in action. Giving us full knowledge of our opponent's hand. And picking out a card to discard if they have a song, which everyone loves singing actually songs are very powerful so that makes sense when forgot to activate the lucky dime and there comes the whoops it happens especially great when it happens in my favor <laughs> but i've done similar stuff for the opponents as well that's why this game is fun. There's a lot of opportunities for mistakes, a lot of opportunities for better plays. <laughs> Opponent has so much ink. Another guest though. Still no activations of that lucky dime. 
opponent is digging for a grab your sword or a pair of grab your swords. On a Cheshire cat. So if the opponent has a combination of grab your swords, let it goes, whole new world, basically needs a lot of removal to deal with our board. I think we just need to quest aggressively. And go to 16, drop a pair of Cheshire cats, kind of forces the issue of double grab your sword. Opponent already played one. I don't think I can play around the double grab your swords though. I could play Milo. Playing Milo makes me vulnerable to double challenge. Let it go. So I think I'll force the opponent to have the double grab your sword. Which probably starts with a whole new world. So I won't worry too much about my current hand. So let's ink the extra cat. And pass the turn back. Oh, good old Cheshire cat. Not all there. I think your bell can still do quite a bit of damage. Thanks for a challenge and ping. There's one, grab your sword. Opponent on 12. Ink, three cards. And one lucky dime. Although a piece of removal like a Hades or a let it go probably be good enough for the time being. You will survive. Cogsworth for defense and lucky dime for three. So opponent has two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten for next turn. Eating the popsicle to heal Miss Tinkerbell. And now we have to pick our final play. What do we think the opponent has? I think we just land the cat. Then if the opponent can kill our Cheshire cat, we're in trouble. Then there's the ping from Tinkerbell and the Zeus card would do it. I don't think I have much of a way around it though. Okay, just go to quest, play another big cat. An ink card. Can you defeat my big evasive cat of doom? That's the question. That's what it comes down to. Ooh, Tamatoa. Tamatoa with Lucky Diamond plays always very nice, fun shenanigans. That's what I was afraid of. Then along came Zeus. Five to the cat. And Tinkerbell will clean up the house. And our last remaining chances of winning. Tinkerbell goes down thanks to our small Cheshire Cat's ability. Maybe we should have played Milo. The opponent would have done the same trick. We would have balanced their entire board. Gained back an extra, gained back a turn. Of 
Once on 12. And yeah, that's 4, 8. And too much. Still land a Milo. But Milo's too mellow to get us out of this situation this time. Yeah. Maybe Milo was the answer all along. Secret of Atlantis and a victory in this game. We will never know. But that was fun. It was a close call. We almost got there, but the opponent out controlled us and went with a lucky dime that gave them the luck necessary to take the game. Let's take a moment to review the Milo Bell deck. Overall, the de deck felt okay. Um, when we pulled off the combo, it was really nice to be like Super Thanos and be, I will bounce Milo whenever I want and bounce everything back. I get a huge tempo advantage, get some cards to keep the pressure going and then win the game off of that tempo or even a second Milo. Um, so that played pretty well. The cards themselves are, are fine. Uh, I wasn't sure whether Cubby would overperform or underperform. It did just okay, actually. Um, I guess that defines the deck pretty well. It's just okay. It doesn't do any of these crazy things that's super oppressive, like Ursula, Deceiver of All, or Tinkerbell, Grab Your Sword, just slashing and hacking. It does some nice, fair stuff, uh, which isn't good enough to be a competitive deck, but it's sturdy enough to, to play casually or to bring to a Friday night Lorcana and have some fun with friends. What I do like about the deck is that it plays a variety of different cards. There's not very many super meta cards in there. I mean, there's Morph, Ursula, Cheshire Cat to some respect. Uh, Maui's played quite a lot. And then I guess Madame Medusa's popular card. John Silver I do really like, but I don't think it's that popular. I guess Kit. So maybe half of the deck is of fairly omnipresent cards. But overall, the deck had a different feel to it. Kind of a mid-range deck with some control-ish options. And just beating down on the opponent with these big threats felt pretty sturdy once you got a dinner bell running. The tempo to play dinner bell was quite problematic, though. When you have to run it on turn 4 and it does nothing, especially if the opponent benjis it, then it just feels oh so terrible uh, and having to pay for to play the dinner bell p2 to activate it to sacrifice a character lose a bit of tempo to draw some cards is a big tempo swing so you really need to either be ahead when you go and land that or have that milo on the battlefield so you can reset your opponent's tempo even further back than your own and then it can work out so overall fun deck give it a try I've had a lot of fun playing it, a lot of close games, and game one felt very satisfying to play. I uh, hope that you've enjoyed the gameplay, you've enjoyed the deck. Don't forget to like the video and leave a comment telling me whether you like the Milo Bell strategy and whether you're going to be trying it out yourself. And on that note, I wish you all a great day, and I will see you next time.